<laughs> it's time to check out one of my favorite characters, Mickey Mouse. While Mickey tends to shy away from any horror nowadays, the old, old Mickey Mouse could do dark, really dark. While good old Mickey can warm our hearts, he also reserves the power to be surprisingly sadistic and creepy. So let's check out the top six creepiest Mickey Mouse cartoons. Basically, if Mickey's crew is in it, it's allowed on this list. Just a heads up that there's a little more dark themes in this list than usual, but of course, we'll still keep it good fun. And obviously, creepy pastas aren't included. We'll save that for another day. Anyway, let's do this countdown. Number six, Ghoul Friend from the new Mickey Mouse series. Some of this imagery is surprisingly grisly for modern day Disney. I know they'd still like to show a little dark imagery nowadays, but Jeebus, the story is your standard horror setting, except with Mickey in it. Mickey's car breaks down in the middle of nowhere at midnight. He looks out silently at the secluded, dark forest. The tension is slowly built as Mickey sees a shadow, but then realizes it was just a squirrel, only to have a black, horrifying image appear before him. And basically the rest of the episode is Mickey running for his life from this creepy ghoul that may have once been goofy. I don't know, they never tell us. Even the music for this one is slightly unsettling. And the way the undead graveyard Goofy sways as he moves is surprisingly uncanny. This one's early on in the list though, because while it's creepy, it's got a pretty harmless, kind of funny finish to it. Spoiler alert, undead Goofy helps Mickey get his car started again. That was nice of him. And Mickey takes him along with him. Yeah, why not? Number five. Mickey's Garden. I've never been a bug person at all. And being the anxiety prone, terrified six year old I once was, Mickey's nightmarish garden stuck with me even to this day. We begin the episode by Mickey concocting the most acidic, vile, noxious poison he can manage in order to annihilate every bug in his garden. But then, Mickey accidentally gasses himself with these poison fumes, sending him into what I can only describe as a psychotropic breakdown where bugs grow to massive proportions, and Mickey is but a helpless pawn in their bizarre, disturbing world. So let's look at some of the imagery here. To start with, look away for a second if you try the photo. Yeah. Even the designs of these spiders and bugs is kind of creepy. The way they all hoard in on the noxious poison and begin inhaling it, making them drunk. We watch Pluto continually tortured as he is isolated, letting off surprisingly disturbing screams as he gasps for air in his suffocating firebug stomach. I remember a lot of imagery from this one about people being trapped, isolated, and plenty of Pluto screeching in terror. Mickey can just not get a break in this place. Everywhere he turns, he's faced with another vile bug monster threatening to consume him. And it ends with Mickey desperately trying to strangle a giant snake to survive. He wakes up eventually to discover it's a nightmare, but I still felt very unsettled by the whole thing. I am perhaps even more disturbed by bugs now because of this creepy Mickey cartoon I happened to see as a kid. Frankly, if I ever see any of these little monsters in my backyard, I'm giving them a solid three full cans of bug spray and stomping on them before I'm satisfied. Number four, Runaway Brain. In this cartoon, Mickey makes the ultimate mistake. The Pandora's box of bot shops. He reads, <gasps> the want ads. Ah! And one ad offers a thousand dollars for a mindless day's work. Little does Mickey know when they say mindless, it literally means his employer is going to strap him to a chair and remove his brain. Talk about your ironclad contract. Once Mickey enters a secluded laboratory, we get some surprisingly hellish imagery as we discover Mickey is going to have his brain forcefully donated to Pete's body. Blech. 
Has anyone else heard this laugh somewhere before? <laughs> oh, that's why. It is Kelsey Grammer. That's neat. But anyway, at the time, the surprisingly macabre nature of this Mickey Mouse cartoon caused a lot of controversy when it was released. One of the Disney chairmen complained that it was disturbing to watch Mickey becoming possessed, though a lot of audiences argued he overcame being possessed really well. And I'd agree with that. It's me, Mickey. Mickey? While witnessing Mickey turn into an empty shell of a monster, void of any compassion, is surprisingly confronting. It remains a fun, kind of creepy Mickey short that I always enjoy looking back on. And the third creepiest Mickey Mouse cartoon. The Führer's Fist. <laughs> I'm bending the rules a bit with this one because it's not directly Mickey Mouse, but Donald's part of Mickey's crew, so I decided to add it on the list. Watching Donald be kicked around a German concentration camp is pretty unsettling. Since it's a propaganda film, all of the imagery is subtly designed to be slightly darker, slightly more unappealing to represent Germany in an ugly light. And you can almost feel the strings being pulled on this one. We're constantly hearing this echoing of a song about being worked to death for Hitler, as Donald is forced at knife point to create bombs for the evil man. It's both funny to watch, but simultaneously very unnerving because of all the creepy undertones at play here. Donald is forced at knife point to steadily work himself into insanity, or else be executed. There's something slightly off about everything in this cartoon. The colours, the swastika shapes, nothing is quite right. As is tradition, Walt claims it to all be a dream at the end. But this one always leaves a very unpleasant feeling in my gut. And the second creepiest Mickey Mouse cartoon is... Pluto's Judgment Day. Pluto is put on a fire to be burned alive. Sure, why not? Western culture was considerably less secular in 1935. So Disney felt the need to terrify kids into being good, or else they would burn at the stake. <laughs> Chains slapped down on him in an empty black room. As he's put before a jury of cats. Apparently, our lovable dog Pluto has mass murdered cats chasing them under steamrollers, or leaving them mentally crippled with post-traumatic stress disorder. I just kind of figured Pluto chase cats. I didn't think he caused mass genocide to the cat population. But he's a dog. As annoying as it might be, it's his nature to yap at cats without thinking. Or cars, or other dogs, or humans, or anything for that matter. But he is literally put over a fire with a screaming, jeering crowd to be burned alive. And we watch him suffer and scream in terror as the flames lick higher and higher. I'll have my Pluto extra crispy. Pluto's Judgment Day is an interesting but disturbing reminder of how incredibly lucky we are today to be beyond the days of electroshock therapy and very one-sided court cases. And if you think this one is bad, believe me, it is about to get even worse. And the number one creepiest Mickey Mouse cartoon is... The Mad Doctor. Back in the very first years of Disney, before even Snow White, Disney would do some dark stuff. And this one was the darkest of all. This does not feel like a Disney cartoon. This is the first and last official Disney creepypasta, created by Walt Disney himself. How Disney could make this and consider it suitable for kids is beyond me. Let's go back to when cartoons just began. When Disney actually thought surgery, amputation, and creating chimeras was cute children's entertainment. Something about all the footage in this one is very isolating. Its entire atmosphere is just strangely black and hateful. This doesn't even look like a spooky castle. It goes beyond that. It literally looks like Mickey has descended into hell, constantly being tormented by Beelzebub's minions. And it gets better. It actually gets better. The Mad Doctor keeps tortured animals captive and plans to do live surgery on Pluto 
in order to turn him into a chicken chimera. <laughs> Jeebus, Walt! This means that Walt has not only discussed live surgery with his child audience, but has literally pulled out chimeras. One of the ultimate scientific taboos. He is literally explaining the procedure of surgery to children with a big blood splattered saw. I'm sorry, I've just got to use this again. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. What was the wonderful world of Disney thinking? And all throughout it, we can continually hear Pluto's wailing in horror as Mickey desperately tries to save him from live surgery by a psychopathic doctor. If modern Disney gives Frozen a PG, how the crapsicles would this get a G? Great, and we finish off with Mickey being strapped to the surgery table for his own live surgery. And now we begin to see the doctor sawing him in two with a giant rusty chainsaw? <laughs> There's just no topping this footage. I don't know if I can ever see Disney in the same light again after seeing this footage. Oh, but it turns out in the last six seconds of the film that it was all just a nightmare. Well, that just makes everything better, doesn't it? I'm not at all scarred. Nope. 1933's The Mad Doctor is the true representation of Mickey being sent to hell. And while it's very interesting, it is by far the creepiest Mickey Mouse cartoon I've ever seen. But honestly, these are still powerful pieces of animation that remain revolutionary vintages in Disney history. And most importantly, regardless of how cringy their teen sitcoms might get, I appreciate that all of Disney's shows look not at the nihilistic, empty side of life, but focus on brightening the perspective of all their viewers in a balanced and realistic way. And I hope Disney can keep showing both kids and adults the graceful, beautiful perspectives of who and what we are through their cartoons and movies. Do you think I missed a particularly creepy Mickey Mouse cartoon? If you can think of one I missed, feel free to leave it in the comments. As before, a big thanks go out to my patrons, who helped make it possible for me to keep making these videos, as well as hidden videos and early releases. I started doing commentaries in all my top lists to try and give the patrons something else to say thank you. So if you'd like to check some of those out, or just like to help support the channel, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash phantomstrider. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.